Dean News, any, any updates? Obviously, you've had a bit of a rest since your last game. No, no big changes. Um, I think everybody's fit uh, apart from uh, David, I think. Uh, let's see how granite is as well. And for the rest, I think uh, we all have to be okay. Um, as I say, you had the weekend off. Can you still take the sort of momentum and belief from that great result and performance against Chelsea into this game? Yes, we've been uh, much more consistent the last few weeks in the Premier League, uh, which is really positive. We have two games to go and um, and I still think it's mathematically possible. So let's try to get um, the best outcome possible. Yeah, you mentioned it's still being mathematically possible for Europe and, and with the other teams not playing till tomorrow, you can go above Everton and put a bit of pressure on Spurs and West Ham if you win as well. That's all we can do at the moment. It's not in our hands. Um, what we can do is win our two remaining games, which is possible, and then um, see what happens. And, you know, would that represent a successful season if you did still manage to get European qualification, be it for the Europa League or the Europa Conference League? I think to have a successful season in this club, you have to be having trophies in your hands. Um, looking at the game itself, Palace will have fans back in at Selhurst Park. Can you feed off that, even though they're all going to be home fans cheering on Palace? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's so great to have uh, fans. We're going to be lucky enough to have our fans back in the last game, which we cannot wait for. And to have um, fans there as well is going to make the atmosphere much better and um, back to how this game has to be played. Looking at Palace as well, um, we don't know yet if Roy Hodgson's going to carry on beyond the end of this season. Just a word about the job he's done. Four seasons in charge, but he's kept them up comfortably. He's an absolutely legend. Um, what he's done to, uh, in football, for English football, I think uh, what he transmits as a manager, as a person, the work he's done at different clubs, I think it's remarkable. And uh, to keep doing it uh, for so long, with the way he's always conducted himself, I think it's a, a great example for me as a young coach. Um, it's someone that uh, I admire. Thanks, Mikel. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. We'll go to Geraint from Sky Sports. Hi, Mikel. Good morning Hi. to you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good stuff. Um, Mikel, can I first of all start off with, obviously, David Luiz announced a few days ago that he's, he's going to leave the club at, at the end of the season. C can you just... Just talk about his decision and, and the influence that he has uh, as a player for you at this club and perhaps wide, wider on football as well, because he's a, a very visible figure in the Premier League. Yes, it is. It's a player that uh, has won everything in football and he has earned every right uh, to do so because uh, who he is as a player and as a person. I had the privilege to work with him uh, for 18 months. I really enjoyed it. I think we got on really good. I think we had some great moments together and he's been really helpful um so one that we really like and appreciate so much so just yeah, say thank you to him and um wishing the best of luck in his next chapter because uh, i'm sure knowing david that he would have uh, many more to come as a player and, and in the future somehow related to the game um can i also ask you about willian as well obviously you know he was signed on a, on, on a longer term deal what, what, as far as you know at this moment in time, what is the situation with William? What are your hopes? I suppose probably the better question to ask you. What are your hopes for William in terms of his future at Arsenal? Well, first of all, that um, that we sign a player with an incredible talent, proven talent and performance level uh, in this league, and um, and this season has been difficult. And uh, I take again full responsibility because I have to be the one taking the or getting the best um, out of him and uh, we had moments but uh, not to the level that um, that he did before and these are the assessment that we're going to do individually with with the players and as well obviously with with Edu, the board and the ownership um, to make the right decisions for the future. Just a, a quick follow-up on that one, do you think more likely than not that he'll remain at Arsenal or can you not tell at this moment? Well, every player that is under contract is very likely to to be here with us next season. Um, Mikel, just m moving on, just to following up on, on an earlier question, it, it was about sort of the run that you're on at the moment, and that a strong finish, momentum, I think, was a word that was used as well. Not so much where it can get you now, obviously, for European football, but how can a manager use that for pre-season and obviously the hopes are for you now for next season as you have a much more successful season than you've had this year but can you tangibly explain to us what a strong finish to a season now could do for Arsenal? 
Well, because uh, winning creates a different environment around the place. It creates uh, much more belief. And when you start to get in a run and you start to understand why this run is happening, um, it always helps to build for the future. A new season is a new season. And to get momentum one, one season to the other is not necessary um, what is going to happen. But uh, certainly it's really good uh, to analyze um, performance and result wise why those things happen because it's uh, really important for us to, to make the improvements that we need uh, for the following season and to know which keys we have to touch um, to make it work better Mikel, can I talk about a player that you've uh, I think you've I'm pretty sure you've played against him, but clearly managed against as well. Um, it won't have escaped your attention that it, you know Harry Kane is, is is potentially looking for a move away for Tottenham at eye-watering figures. Um, just what kind of player is he? Um, probably with maybe both your hats on as a player and as a manager. Hmm. Well, I suffer him both ways as a player and as a as a manager. I think um, English football should be so proud uh, to have someone. With his talent, with his quality, and as well with his consistency, I think what he's been able to do over the years in that position in this league, it's um, it's incredible. And um, and the national team has uh, someone that hanging into him. It gives you just the opportunity to compete against any team, because you know that uh, he can win you the game any moment. And uh, and that's big words in football. And um, Mikel, just finally from me and. and I, I apologise slightly in advance because I know you've asked answered lots of questions uh, about this, but it, it's really from a slightly different perspective. In terms of whatever takeover, whatever there is, however which way it goes, but just as a manager, clarity that you know what you're dealing with, in any essence of being a football club manager, how much does clarity help you that you know exactly what's going on, whether it be, for example, with a board, with a takeover, with the players the, the recruitment you want to do. Mm. How much can, does clarity help you, especially with the job that you want to do at this club? Well, I think if, if I've been something, it's honest. And probably once I was too honest. And so when I could not see it, or I had doubts, I say it. Now I have no doubts. It's so clear. It's a very clear statement from the ownership, very clear direction from the ownership, very clear direction with what we want to do. Is zero question marks there. Mikel, listen, thank you as always for uh, for taking the questions. Much appreciated. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Gareth. We'll go to George Cummins from the BBC. Thanks, Dan. Mikel, good morning. Hi. Um, you're smiling when you're talking about David Luiz. I think a lot of people like him. Just what, just tell us what's he like as a character because he, he's supposed to be a great character, isn't he? And how hard has it been for you to let him go? Well, because when you get to know the person, his background, where he was raised in Brazil, why he's done... To get to this point, it's, um, it's remarkable. And then the, you understand a lot of things that happen for a reason. And sometimes it's, uh, it's not just an ability, a quality, or a de determination. It's uh, many other factors. I really enjoy it. I learned from him. Um, he's been very helpful every time um, with the team. And um, I feel sadness as well because you get attached to the players emotionally. And, and one is the the player that we have to get the maximum out of him, and then is the person. And when it gets to these stages, um, it's tough and um, and it hurts because that relationship now is going to be um, going away, uh, at least in a space or not see him every day. And um, and again, I have to say thank you to him. Was it your decision? Was it a joint decision? We had a very clear. Um, talks in the last uh, few months we already had uh, a big decision to make last year when when we had to extend his his contract and in a very difficult moment during the covid world and with the pay cuts and everything and we managed to to extend that for one more season he's given his best and um, i tried to help him as much as i possibly could the the club as well and and after some conversations uh, we decided that uh, is the best way to do it now and will Saliba be his replacement next season, do you think? Or have you got you to will see in the summer the possible replacement. William is our player um, for sure. And that's the decision that uh, we're going to be taking soon. OK. If I just ask you one about the season. I mean, you when you took over Arsenal, I had this problem of winning away at big sides and their record against the top six. You've, you've been eroding that and you've been picking up these wins as you've gone. 
What's really cost you this season was that run in November, wasn't it? And that's really what damaged you when you, you lost them too many matches in a row. That run in November was um, obviously crucial and, and determined, uh, even with how consistent we've been after Christmas, um, not enough to reach the objectives that um, we wanted. I don't just put that down to that, George. It's so much happened at the club and I believe in other factors as well sometimes to happen, um, why the ball is going in or not in or a decision. It's very small margins. Um, with everything has happened, if you analyze where we are and where we could be, um, it's not that far, but uh, certainly it's not enough. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, George. We'll go to Ian Abrahams from Talk Sports. Hi, Mikhail. How are Hi. you? Good. Um, so Harry Kane is leaving Spurs. Are Arsenal going to buy him? <laughs> I don't know if Harry Kane is leaving Spurs. You're saying that, Ian. I don't know. I, I, I think he's still there. If he is leaving Spurs, um, it's been reported that only really three clubs in this country, the two Manchester clubs and Chelsea, probably could afford to buy him. So does that sadden you a bit that Arsenal haven't got that financial power right now if someone like Harry Kane was available to, them, to go and buy him? It's too many ifs. If, if he wants to leave, um, he will try to make the best uh, decision for himself, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously, it's unusual for a Spurs player to join Arsenal. I'm granted on that one. Um, you, you've spoken about David Luiz. Um, you've also been linked this week with, with Brian Bertrand. You're going to be linked with quite a few players. Is this going to be a busy summer for you, do you think? Well, with yeah, if I have to answer to every question about every possible transfer or, or players might be leaving, then we'll be sitting here for hours. Um, what I can say, Ian, is that uh, we know what we want to do. It's a clear plan to put that together. It's true that there are a lot of decisions to make because as well we have uh, a lot of players on loan, um, some of them that have to come back and, um, and we will see step by step, focus on the priorities that we have and um, let's see how much we can do. You said earlier that um, even getting European football wouldn't make it a successful season. It's all about lifting trophies uh, above your head, which is a, a really commendable thing to say. But, you know, in terms of that, what do you have to work on for next season to make it successful? Have there been things that you've done wrong this year, things that players have done wrong, or, or has it just been a difficult season in, in, in the whole? I want to reflect now um, the next week or so when we finish, but uh, I'm sure that I've done a lot of things uh, wrong, 100%, I can tell you now, before going through it. Um, so how am I going to make uh, much better decisions, get the best out of this play, get the best out of the football club and all the resources that... Uh, we have. I have spent a lot of time and effort um, identifying critical points to change, then how those changes are going to be made, in which time frame we could do them. I want to spend time building, creating, and with all the foundation that we have in place now, evolve the team, the club, everything, the way we want to do. I want a pre-season, we can work with the players and create. I'm a really creative person, I think. I want to create, evolve, and a lot of time since I've been come here, it's, um, it's to yeah, determine and make some very, very difficult decisions that have to undo, but I want to start doing more, more, more and more because the, the capacity that we have to, to do, it's, it's incredible. I'm so excited about that. And I see that moment of a lot of change as a big opportunity for, for our future. You're like a Picasso of football. You, you like to create things. I I see all you, I, I'm you not know. saying that. I see that I love to, to create. There's a lot of good things that uh, we've done since we changed uh, many things. There is still a lot to do, a lot to catch up. But our potential is incredible because I can see the ambition from the club first. And when we have that type of ambition, um, we have an incredible margin to to achieve what we want. One last thing, you met you really kind words about Roy Hodgson earlier, describing him as a legend. Um, do, you, do you think we're going to see managers like that in the future that have been managing for 30, 40 years? I mean, you're in the job right now, you haven't got a grey hair on your head despite the fact that I do have. <laughs> um, well, I think we can count them with with this hand because uh, what he's done and in this league in particular it's honestly incredible brilliant good luck tomorrow night good to see you again thank you
Thanks, Ian. We'll go to Mark Man Bryan from PA. Morning, Kel. Hi. Um, just on David, if I may, um, was that an agreement made by the club or was it a, a conscious thing made by both parties that he would, he would leave? It's, a, it's after a few conversations that, um, that we had, David and I, we discussed this situation uh, in different occasions and, um, and the other day we made uh, the final decision on that. George asked you earlier about William Sleeper and with, obviously you've not got an endless pot of money this summer, so does it make sense to give him a chance to show what he can do when he comes back from his low move? Again, when we finish the season, we will sit down, he's still competing, sit down, discuss the roles of every member of that squad and how they can fulfill that role. And, um, and he's our player, so he will be back here for sure. And, um, and after that, we'll make um, the decision based on the agreement of the role that each player has going to have in the squad. I know you've said many times that you've got plenty of players out on loan at the moment, but with William going in January, was it, did he need that more than most, given that he needed to get out and play football with his age and his development and things like that? Yes, I wouldn't like this happening at the start of the season and when we make a certain decision and because we had eight central defenders, which is unheard of. Um, but uh, we didn't find the, the right moment, the right club, the right agreement to do that. And in my opinion, we could have used those four or five months in a better way. We tried to maximize them when we decided to keep him here till December, and now he's had a run of game that uh, that he needed after the difficult year that he had uh, the previous season. In in the normal non-COVID world, you'd have been able to just jump on the Eurostar, obviously, and go and watch him on, on occasion. Have you still been able to monitor his development and speak to him and things like that? Absolutely, but uh, we still have great people um, doing that. Ben Napa is always in contact with him. He's the one creating every assessment. We are, as a coaching staff, obviously following his progression, watching his games and, um, and in contact with him. So um, it's not an ideal world to feel that it still belong here and you can have a face-to-face -face relationship, but uh, we try to do the best possible way. And just finally, Mikel, there was some speculation last week about the future of, of Bernd Leno. I think yesterday he said he wants to stay. In your eyes, will Bernd be your, your number one at the start of next season? It's another one with a contract here that uh, because of the length of his contract, a lot of things, um, it will be speculating. But he's not going anywhere? He has two years here and, and he belongs here. Thank you, Mikel.